Okay, so now that we've covered demand, supply becomes very, very simple to understand. Let's start off the game by defining supply in economics. So supply is defined as the quantity of a good or service that suppliers are willing and able to supply at a given price in a given time period. It's pretty much exactly the same definition as demand, but now just supply, not demand. Okay, so again, the concept of willing and able is very important. Okay, because so suppliers might be willing to sell thousands and thousands of units, but if they only have 100 units, then they're not able. Okay, so they need to be willing and able to constitute supply. So, this time, we've got a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. For that reason, we draw the supply curve upward sloping. Whereas demand was down sloping, now supply is upward sloping. Alright, what does that mean? The law of supply tells us why it's upward sloping. Okay, so when the price is higher, when the price goes up, suppliers are more willing to supply. Okay, they're happy to supply, quantity supply goes up. Whereas when the price, price is lower, quantity supply goes down. Now, but why does that occur? So let's kind of show that on a diagram, first of all. So when the price goes up, let's say to P2, P1 to P2, the price goes up. Reading off the supply curve, okay, quantity supply goes up to Q2. All right. The law of supply tells us there is a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. Therefore, we draw the curve upward sloping. But why is that? Two key reasons why. One, very simply, there's a profit motive for doing so. By increasing the price, okay, and by selling more, okay, increasing supply, the profits that can be made, the revenues generated, will increase too. You're selling more at a higher price, okay, profits will increase. So there's a profit motive for doing so. Second, to increase quantity means to increase costs. Okay, it's impossible to increase quantity without increasing your total costs. Well, firms are only going to be willing to increase quantity if they can cover some of that cost or all of the costs. Okay, to cover that cost, you need to increase the price. So two main reasons why, at a higher price, quantity will, will go up. Right, good. Let's just show the basic extensions and contractions along the curve again. So remember, okay, assuming Cetra is paribus once more, when we change the price, we're just going to move along the curve. Okay, assuming now all other factors that can affect supply remain the same. Assuming Cetra is paribus. So we know that when the price goes up, quantity supply goes up. Let's just show what that looks like. So let's say that was at point A. So initial price of quantity at point A, we've now increased the price, we've ended up at point B, where we moved along the curve, okay, we moved up the curve in this case. Well, because quantity supply has gone up, okay, we've extended supply. So that's an extension of supply. Okay, very simple law of supply, when the price goes up, quantity supply also goes up. Now let's reduce the price. Let's say to P3, okay, so the price has gone down. Quantity supply has fallen to Q3. Q1 to Q3 is a falling quantity supply. Let's make that point, point C. We've now moved down the curve, which on the supply curve is a contraction of supply. Okay, supply, quantity supply has fallen. Contraction of supply. Okay, so basic movements along the supply curve, just like we did with demand. Okay, any increase in quantity supply means we're extending supply. Any reduction in quantity supply means we're contracting supply. Okay? Simple stuff. Now, again, let's drop the assumption of Cetra's paribus. Okay, so that's all well and good. The law of supply is understood. When the price changes on its own, assuming nothing else will stay the same, then the effects, or probably assuming nothing else will change, they are the effects. Now, let's drop that assumption. Let's let other factors affect the supply curve. Okay, so let's draw. Again, we've got price on the um, y axis and quantity on the x. And let's draw our supply curve, call it S1. Pick a price to start off at, let's call that P1 and Q1. Right. What other factors, now dropping the assumption of Cetra's paribus, what other factors will affect supply other than the price? Well, again, let's use a nice little mnemonic device to help us. Okay, and the device I use, which is very handy, is this. Okay, think about it. When you drink a lot of pints, or whatever liquid it might be, I don't want to make assumptions here. But when you drink a lot of pints, you then need the WC. You need the toilet. So pints, WC. Think of this mnemonic device and you'll be fine. Before I define what these are, just think logically. What's going to affect supply? Well, really, anything 
that affects the costs of production. Anything that affects the cost of producing something is going to affect supply. So if something becomes more expensive to produce, well at the same price you're going to supply less of it. It's more expensive to do so. If something becomes cheaper to produce, the costs of producing it fall, well then supply will increase at the same price. You can supply more at the same price. So really, a lot of these factors will just be cost of production related. Right, but let's just define what Python WC is. So P is productivity. A productivity. I in direct tax. Okay, N, number of firms. Okay. Number of firms in the industry. T, technology. S, subsidies. W, weather. And C is just generically cost of production. Okay? All the other cost of production related factors. Okay, and I'll put, for example, you know, wages. Okay? Uh, raw material prices. Prices, I'll put them there. Commodity prices. Another one. Commodity prices. Okay? Fuel prices. Okay, etc. They're the key ones. In truth, cost of production really should be at the top, but it doesn't quite fit with this nice funky little device. So it's at the bottom. But any, any way to look at it, okay, the best way to look at it is to think about cost of production. Okay? Whatever will increase the cost of production will shift the supply curve to the left. Whatever will reduce the cost of production will shift the supply curve to the right. But Pine's WC give you a good idea. Okay, so logically, any one of these factors that will increase supply, okay, maybe by reducing the cost of production, will shift the supply curve to the right. So that will look like this. Okay, so S1 to S2 at the same price, more is supply, quantity supply increases to Q2, the curve shifts to the right. Okay, similarly, any of these factors that will shift the curve to the left, maybe an increase in the cost of production, which is a basic reduction in supply, will shift the curve to the left, and look like this. Okay, we'll call that S3. So at the same price, less is supplied from Q1 to Q3 now, and that's a shift to the left, okay, so let's just do that. Now we can also show, I'm just going to put this on here, downward and upward shifts in supply. So I'm going to explain this in a second, okay, but we can also talk about upward and downward shifts as well as left and right shifts. Let's just briefly understand what all these are and which way the curve would shift. So an increase in productivity, okay, workers can produce more output in a given time period. So output per worker increases. Okay? An increase in productivity will shift the curve to the right. Okay? An indirect tax, okay? that will increase the cost of production, that will shift the curve to the left. More firms in the industry, okay? more sellers will mean more supply, the curve will shift to the right. An improvement in technology, maybe more efficient capital, okay? better machinery will shift the curve to the right. Subsidies, money grants given by the government to help production, to reduce the cost of production, will shift the curve to the right. Good weather, whatever good weather that might be. So that might be sunshine, that might be rain, depending on what good weather will increase supply. Okay, good weather will shift the curve to the right. Okay, a reduction in the cost of production, a reduction in wage costs, a reduction in raw material prices, a reduction in commodity prices, a reduction in fuel prices. All will reduce the cost of production, which will shift the supply curve to the right. Okay, and vice versa, the supply curve will shift the other way. Okay? Now, the up and down shifts, right? I'm just going to briefly mention this for indirect taxes and subsidies. Okay, so we know an indirect tax, an increase of it or an implementation of it, will shift the curve to the left. The vertical distances, the vertical distance here between S1 and S3 tells you the actual tax. Okay, the monetary value of the tax is represented by the vertical distance. Similarly for subsidies, we know the curve will shift to S2, but we could actually say that the downward distance, the downward vertical distance between S1 and S2 okay, re represents the actual monetary value of the subsidy. In that sense, we can say for an indirect tax, the curve shifts upwards or the curve shifts downwards. But if you just simply put a left and right would shift, that's fine as well. Okay, but these are all the factors dropping the assumption of Cetra's parameters that can shift the supply curve. Other factors that will affect supply uh, outside the price. Okay, so now the price is staying constant, but supply, quantity of supply is increasing or decreasing. These are the reasons why. Okay, so that's supply done as well. So learn all of these factors, the mnemonic devices really help with these topics. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.